Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So this video is about Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, who just became leader of the Democratic Unionist Party a few days ago. So the newest leader of any British political party. And he takes over um, after Edwin Poots, who's the second shortest serving leader of any political party in the United Kingdom. He was leader for only about three weeks before he tendered his resignation. And I think he was acting leader for slightly longer whilst they organised the, um, um, the election of his replacement. Now, Sir Geoffrey had stood against Edwin Poots um, for that leadership contest. Sir Geoffrey narrowly lost. I'm not quite sure why Edwin Poots went down better with the grassroots. Perhaps they feel that uh, Sir Geoffrey is over-sophisticated. But um, Sir Geoffrey was clearly the better choice, even though I don't think he's a marvellous politician. Um, always seems sort of slightly out of his depth. There's something childlike about him. I mean, Edwin Poots comes across like uh, as a dimwit, a backwoodsman, the sort of person who'd have really no appeal outside of Northern Ireland and only, only a limited appeal within it. You know, uh, bear in mind this party was once led by Ian Paisley. Now, you might think that uh, Ian Paisley was vile, and I've got strong criticisms of his rhetoric myself, um, but he had presence. And as uh, David Cameron said, that uh, Paisley was one of the UK's most instantly recognisable political figures. Um, these are big shoes to fill of the big lad, um, and none of them could really fill them. You know, Arlene Foster had a very different style, but um, she was much more approachable, quite creditable, um, more reserved, restrained, respectable. Um, but uh, so who is this um, Sir, Sir Geoffrey? Well, um, he's almost uh, 60 years old. He comes from Kilkeel, this um, village in, in County Down. Uh, came from a working class family, the oldest of eight children. Um, uh, so unsurprisingly, he's brought up in the Protestant denomination, Presbyterian Church to be, to be more exact. Um, so he eschewed higher education. He joined the Orange Order as, as an adolescent, in case you don't know that that is. That is a, um, um, a, an organisation which any Protestants are permitted to join, and um, it is a monarchist organisation. People say it's a unionist organisation, though strictly speaking that's actually not true. I mean, they, they are unionists, I think, without exception, but you wouldn't actually have to be if you see the, the oath that Orangemen have to take. Um, so it's, it's so called because it's uh, to honour the memory of William III, also known as William of Orange, who was Stadtholder of the Netherlands, King of Ireland, King of Scots, King of England. Uh, he's the one who brought about the 1688 revolution and won the Battle of the Boyne in 1690, um, um, thereby upholding parliamentary supremacy. But that also led to Protestant supremacy and the reintroduction discrimination against the Catholic majority in Ireland and the Catholic minority in, in Great Britain. Now, the Orange Order says that they don't advocate for, for sectarian discrimination, although a few generations ago, a lot of them did discriminate on a sectarian basis. But um, the, the Orange Order said they support the monarchy being Protestant. So as I suppose the British monarchy were to become Catholic, they would no longer support it. But actually, there's nothing in their oath about the, the Act of Union. And bear in mind, in 1800, the, the Orange Order campaigned against the Act of Union. So the Orange Order has changed a lot over its time. And the Orange Order was only for members of the Church of Ireland initially. Anyway, I digress. So... Um, Donaldson said he felt this um, uh, burning sense of grievance of the way this community was treated. Is that unionists or Protestants or possibly both? Um, you remember, he was uh, growing up during the height of the Troubles. You know, he was, he was a teenager in the 70s. So um, he um, joined the Ulster Defence Regiment, which is this part-time unit of the British Army. Men and women actually living in Northern Ireland do your ordinary job and then do a few hours a week military service you know, manning roadblocks, stopping and searching people, things like that, trying to interdict armed smuggling for the IRA. So about 300 UDR soldiers uh, were murdered by the IRA and the INLA, and the UDR killed only about six uh, terrorists themselves. So obviously, as a soldier, you want to kill the enemy. So they had to uh, um, exercise enormous restraint. The anguish they felt when their comrades were killed, the desire to hit back and... They, they couldn't do so because they often couldn't identify the IRA, not going around in uniforms, not having bases and so on. But sometimes they knew who the IRA were and, and a handful of UDR guys actually assisted loyalist terrorists or were loyalist terrorists themselves. So, um, and Donaldson, he even joined the, joined, then joined the Ulster Unionist Party. So he was part of the UDR, the Ulster Unionist Party and the Orange Order. It all seemed to be the same movement to him. 
So Enoch Pearl was um, the MP for, for um, uh, down south from 1974 till 1987, if I got that right. Uh, by moving the county down, the southern section thereof, down, down south sounds something different. Remember in UK constituencies, if there's a point of, comp point of the compass, you put it after the place, after the name of the town or the county. Um, anyway, so then he became the, the agent for um, Enoch Pearl, managing the constituency for him. He later worked for, for Jim Molyneux, who was leader of the RC Unitist Party. So... Um, uh, anyway, he was elected to various positions, like a Northern Ireland Assembly existed in the mid, in the, in the mid '80s or in 1996, a new um, Northern Ireland Forum. As an Ulster Unionist, he eventually uh, was elected to Parliament for the L Lagan Valley constituency in 1997. The youngest MP uh, from amongst the Ulster Unionist Party, he married young. He had two children. He's the eldest of eight children of a working class family. So um, the Arsenis party was split over the Good Friday Agreement and, and Sir Geoffrey came out against. Um, he was under significant threat from Republicans and he um, had to be under 24-hour police uh, protection. So he finally left the, the Arsenis party and he went over to the, uh, to the DUP, as indeed did Arlene Foster. Um, uh, and so he was elected an MP for them. So uh, anyway, he has finally become leader. He was knighted quite a few years ago. He's a Brexiteer. His views are really quite, um, uh, quite predictable. He was one of the more socially liberal um, DUP politicians in years ago. Who was saying he's sort of welcome single mothers to his constituency. He's got no beef about that. Or some of his constituents, they wanted um, Irish citizenship, especially after Brexit, and they needed this to be signed for by some elected representative or police officer. Say, yes, I know who you are, I confirm your identity. So he was doing that. Some will say, isn't that hypocritical? Well, no, this is a conservative to his constituents. If they want Irish citizenship and they're entitled to it, yeah, he's going to facilitate them. It doesn't um, negate his desire to see Brexit brought about. He's not applying for Irish citizenship. Um, so two of his cousins were killed by the IRA in, in the Troubles, and um, unsurprisingly that caused him um, anguish, copper fastened um, his views. So he made some astonishing remarks in 2009, saying that Catholics are primarily loyal to the Pope. I mean, I don't know which century he's in. He obviously not read a great deal of history. OK, certainly in the British Isles, you know, most Catholics would use contraception. Most Catholics consider consider. Um, uh, divorce to be acceptable, the Republic of Ireland even voted for abortion. So the idea that Catholics are said and led by the Pope on everything is, is false. I mean, there are a lot of people who are nominal Catholics who don't actually hear Mass. Even those who hear Mass, a lot of them disagree with the Church and disobey the Church on many issues. Um, the Pope does not have total control of Catholics. There have been Catholic monarchs who've gone to war against the papacy um, many times. The Pope is against the death penalty or or nuclear weapons, but many Catholic politicians and voters vote for these things. So um, he was, uh, Donaldson, he's kind of against gay marriage and things like that. Well, that's enough about Geoffrey Donaldson, um, a, a slightly better leader for the DUP. Toodaloo.